Welcome in everybody to TYT Sports. That is Denise Jones. I am Rick Strom and we have Taylor Sharp on the program yes, today, the do. creator of Hoops Africa. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Thanks for joining us. So look, firstly, you look like you are like 14 years old. <laughs> uh, you have gone to <laughs> South Africa. You have gone to Zimbabwe. You have told these incredible stories. How exactly did this did this idea come about that you wanted to do this? Well, the genesis behind this project starts back when I was in college. After my first summer, I spent in in Zimbabwe with a nonprofit called Hoops for Hope, and they use basketball as a vehicle to teach life skills, HIV AIDS awareness, conflict resolution, gender equality, and I was blown away by the work they do. I was actually on my 17 hour flight back home when I was seated next to a guy named Dan Hedges who ultimately became my partner on this project. He's a freelance videographer and over the years I, I began working um, with a sports agency that represents a lot of NBA guys and I ended, ended up working at the NBA. So culminate that together uh, when the NBA was holding the first ever Africa game in 2015. I was like there's a documentary here to be told to tell the story of Hoops for Hope and the work they do in Zimbabwe and South Africa. But also kind of a collection of all the stories of what the league has done to grow the game. And looking at the two trailers that you guys have off of your website as well, there are a lot of people in support of this. You had Adam Silver, you had the Deputy Commissioner, you had Hakeem Olajuwon, you had Dikembe Mutombo. What is the message that they want to send through this film? Well, I think everyone kind of involves just celebrating the growth of the game, but not only the growth of the game and the players that have come from different parts of Africa and are in now NBA stars and, and how they're using a grassroots effort to grow the game on the continent, but also the impact that it has on society. You know, it's bigger than the game. We talk about Ubuntu, uh, it's I am because you are. It's more about the team than the individual. And I think that's the message behind this film is that Ubuntu matters. So away from the playing court, you know, in every facets of life, we can all take in that message of Ubuntu. Hey Taylor, what challenges did you face when creating this? Because I know a project like this with this magnitude, I'm sure you didn't, or maybe you did anticipate for it to get as big as it did, but what were some challenges you faced throughout this journey? Well, yeah, candidly, I was a college student. I was I was 20 working in the NBA League office when I had the idea. Intense. And <laughs> um, on doors on, on different floors, um, kind of pitching the concept behind this film and if people could get behind it and let us come and have all access at the first ever Africa game and Basketball Without Borders and to get interviews you know, with people like Adam Silver and Kimbe Mutombo and let Hakeem Olajuwon narrate it. You know, there are challenges just because it was my first project. Right. Um, but, but fortunately, Dan and I, my partner in this film, you know, we, we kept working through any of those hurdles and, and it was a message that everyone wanted to get behind. So I was blown away by the support that the league, its players um, and everyone that we worked with on this project gave us. Taylor, what have you seen in the African game that is so different and is so transparent in comparison to what we're seeing with even the European game, with the European influx that we have right now in the NBA? Well, I mean, it's interesting because obviously you have so many people in, in Africa and so many people who, who are starting to love this game as it continues to grow. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting because you know the development of the game there has been a little a lot newer. Um, so there's a lot left there. I think that we can see, you know, a ton of upside in the amount of great players that we'll see to continue to come into the league um, from the continent as a whole. But not to not to generalize it to one experience, but I mean, I look anecdotally at my experience in Zimbabwe and just the passion that was behind the game. You know, there's a lot of soccer in Zimbabwe until Hoops for Hope, this organization, came in and started building basketball courts and teaching teaching basketball to the kids. And in the areas where basketball is, where Hoops for Hope is. There's a lot less people on the soccer fields. They're hanging out by the courts. They're playing sunrise to sundown. Um, I know I played with a Zimbabwean club team that a lot of the national team guys play on while I was there that summer. And um, I threw an alley oop to one of my best friends on the team. Oh. He brought one for a dunk, and everyone ran on the court, danced, and they had to stop the game. And I think that little anecdote for me is just like you know it is a good picture of of how a lot of people there in Zimbabwe and beyond love the game, and I think it'll grow a lot. That's incredible. And as we're entering the new year, what's next uh, for uh, what's next, really? Well, Hoops Africa, Boots there's so Matters, much happening. There is so much happening for us. You know, we just premiered worldwide on NBA TV. We're in a limited rights deal with them, so we have an agreement for them to air it over the next couple months. So you can continue to see the film on NBA TV and beyond um, through our partnership with the NBA. 
for us, we want to continue to spread this message of Ubuntu. We want people to continue to see our film, um, but also to support organizations like Hoops for Hope that are using sport for good. Uh, and to continue to watch the, the development of the game because you have so many great players in the league um, who are representing their home countries. And you're going to see a lot out of the African continent as we go forward. And we see a lot of these players, even in European soccer, where if they're playing for a club like Manchester United or Chelsea or even Real Madrid, a lot of them will support their home nations, like Ghana and Cameroon and what have you, with armbands and wristbands during those games. Have you seen some sort of support in the NBA from those respective guys who have come from Africa, South Africa, what have you, that they've been speaking up a lot more, not only for this project, but also for the talent level that is in Africa? Oh yeah, I mean, um, one of the neat things about this project was that we got to interview and sit down with a lot of players and, and hear their stories and tell their stories. And you know, we, we featured the legends like Hakeem and Dikembe and Manute Bowl, who paved the way for all of the current guys. Um, and those current guys we sit down with, Luol Deng and Luke Bamute, and it's so neat to hear about them and the pride they have um, in their countries and the talent that's coming from it. You know, Luke Bamute, he tells us in the film that he, he at his annual camp in Cameroon, uh, discovered uh, two players in the NBA currently, one of which is Joel Embiid. Um, oh, helped him. Wow. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, Luol, Luol Deng shared stories with us about how you know he's at he's here in LA and he's getting Instagram DMs from kids uh, you know back on, on the African continent who are who are DMing him videos of, of the you know the plays that they're doing and, and how they're keeping up with the NBA to to learn themselves. So you know I think a lot of them have odes to their home countries. Um, it was special in the Africa game in 2015. Which is the first time the league, uh, first time a U.S. professional sports league had ever held a game on African soil. All of the players on Team Africa had their home country's flag on the back of their jersey. Um, so I think there's a lot of pride in the players in their home countries, and they're going back and they're holding clinics and they're ensuring that the you know next crop of talent is is going to be there too. Absolutely, and Taylor, what you're doing with uh, Hoops for Hope is such an amazing thing, and, and I'm so curious, what does uh, Ubuntu matters? Can you talk to us about what Ubuntu matters means? Of course. So actually how I found out about Hoops for Hope, a South African and Zimbabwean nonprofit as a North Carolina kid, I, uh, I, I was reading an ESPN article about the Boston Celtics and Ubuntu. And that caught my eye. I, I looked into what that meant. And Ubuntu is an African philosophy um, that was taught to Doc Rivers by the South African director of Hoops for Hope. And he came in and, and talked to the Boston Celtics right when they got their big three together in oh, the 2000s. So they got this new, you know, this new group of guys, and they're destined for big things. But they needed, you know, good chemistry in the locker room, and, and that started off by a combined effort around Ubuntu. So uh, Kita from South Africa, the Hoops Africa director, came in and spent the offseason with the team, talked to them about Ubuntu, and for the rest of the season, the Boston Celtics broke down every huddle with one, two, three Ubuntu. I mean, they, they used it every day. Scalabrini says they said it 50 times a day. Wow. Um, just the genesis behind you know Ubuntu matters that you know comes from derives from the you know Southern African region um, is something that I saw in my time in Zimbabwe and South Africa. It just kind of lived out, and uh, but it cements itself in, in NBA history by the Hoops for Hope and Boston Celtics connection in 08. Uh, so they won the championship, as you know, and they put Ubuntu on their NBA championship ring. So it's something special that I think a lot of NBA fans don't know about is this connection to the continent. Taylor, as I'm seeing this, and you know, you said that you were 20 years old, you were in college when you had the idea of launching this project and going to South Africa, Zimbabwe, and what have you. I'm just curious, for anybody that is watching this clip and they are a young aspiring filmmaker or they just somehow want to get started, what would be your advice to someone who maybe doesn't have the resources but has a dream of making making a film similarly to what you made involving sports? I mean, you have to. Sports can be a powerful thing. There are a lot of stories to tell, and I think if you're 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 getting that urge to to go out and start a project or to do something, you just have to go and, and do it. Um, for me, it was knocking on doors in the NBA league office. Um, with people who I didn't directly work with, saying I have this project in mind, you know, would you would you support me going over there and and having the access to film? And fortunately, you know, what was the what was the worst thing they could say? No. Uh, fortunately, a lot of people said yes. So if you're someone with an idea, uh, filmmaking or, or anything else, I think you just have to 
kind of believe in that urge and believe in the power of why you want to do it. And uh, if you go out and kind of put your own momentum behind it, I think you'll find that others will follow suit. And Taylor, as you said, there are a lot of soccer fields, obviously, in Africa. And soccer is always going to be the king in Africa. However, what sort of rise have you seen through these guys being successful, like the Kim Olajuwans, the Luke Richard Maba, Mutes, the Luol Dangs, the Joel Embiid's? What sort of rise have you seen in Africa with the development of parks and also basketball courts? Yeah, well, I think with every you know with every player that makes it to the league, to the NBA, and to other professional leagues, and with every nonprofit that starts to to grow the game. You know, people are coming back and they're and they're building courts and they're making sure the game is taught. And I think that then gives you know that then gives the game back to wherever you put that court and and you can let them own it. Um, so I think as as you know guys like Hakeem um, who set up a dream for young guys, um, you know I think that continues to to manifest down to you know each next generation. Wanted to be just like them, and not only wanted to make it to the NBA, but just wanting to learn this great game and allowing it to be their own community's game. So I've just found that you know the more work that is done in in spreading the game, um, the more players that continue to have success that you know their their younger um, generation can can look up to them, then that is going to continue to create this widespread of of the sport. Absolutely, and Taylor, I can't help but wonder: in a perfect world, is there any athletes right now that you would like to potentially collaborate with or have them hop on board? Anyone absolutely that comes to mind? Yeah, there are, there are a lot of people. I, I could talk <laughs> a lot just about on that subject because you know I have a lot of future ideas, and and there are, there's always an ideal you know collaborator there for for each idea. For this one, I mean, we were so fortunate to have worked with. You know, so many people from the African basketball narrative, right? right. Some of the very top stars um, and the most important people in the storyline were we were fortunate enough to work with. You know, on this film, we we love to to have them come in even more. Um, and on our Ubuntu tour, as we continue to to spread this, but in general, um, I'm a big fan of what LeBron and Maverick Carter are up to with with Uninterrupted and, and with Spring Hill. They are a good model for me to look after. So I'll throw those guys on the list. Nice, good right. names. Taylor Sharp, thank you so much for joining us. And please follow him on Twitter for more updates at tsharp94. And then also at Hoops Africa. Incredible stuff. And we are certainly very, very happy and pleased that you were able to join us here on TYT Sports. Absolutely. Keep spreading the good stuff, man. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Ubuntu matters, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Taylor.